Since I was about 10 or 11, I wanted to be a modern artist. I discovered Picasso and Dolly and Jasper Johns and stuff uh, through Jasper Johns through Newsweek magazine, you know, like Life, Look, Newsweek. And in the late 60s, maybe 68 or 9, there was an, uh, an issue of Life, I think it was Life, it was or Look, Sound and Fury in the Arts, and they had like all these incredible pictures of Oldenburgs and Stellas and Keenholtz and stuff. And I found art magazines, you know, I was in a little, I was growing up in a little town in Texas, so I had to kind of look for this stuff. But yeah, I was interested in painting first, and painting modern art is kind of experimental painting in some sense, and that's what affected the comics, because the comics really, early on I thought they could be similar, that they might you know, that I might be able to paint shows and things, but comics just kind of wanted to be comics. It has its own set of rules and uh, our possibilities. So now I just I let them be separate. I don't try, and it, it's actually, it creeps me out if I were to try to like paint paintings of my cartoon characters, like because it's such a different uh, path. <laughs> It's more complicated painting. It's rendered up, which I normally don't do. We were talking about, and uh, it has. Uh, it's a scene at the beginning of one of my favorite monster movies, which was the first movie I ever. When I was about five or six, I saw an ad in the paper in Brown. We were living in Brownsville, Texas, at the, on the Mexican border. And uh, I saw an ad, and I just opened up a newspaper, and there was a dinosaur, and I was crazy about dinosaurs. It was a movie ad, and I could tell. And so I whined until my parents let me and my little sister go to see this movie with this uh, guy that worked for my father, George Solis. She, and my sister was like four or five or something. And it was on a double feature with The Curse of Frankenstein, and it just scared us to death. <laughs> Luckily, the dinosaur one was first. So we watch the land unknown. And this scene, it's like they're flying these people. I don't know why they're doing it. They're flying, they're checking out some aberration or something at the North Pole in a helicopter. And then they get hit right after this moment. They get hit by a pterodactyl and crash land into the land unknown. Where there's guys in dinosaur suits that are really phony, you know. Yeah. It's just you can see their, where their limbs are inside the costume and stuff. I always liked that. And, so I might I should maybe paint some more paintings from that movie because when I was a kid I always did these drawings of helicopters chopping T Rex's neck uh -huh. with the blades because that happened in the movie like over and over like it's really a horrifying thing but it was you know it's kind of like you know when you're a kid it's all I don't know violent fun of some sort you know action. My father is a cowboy and Indian painter. You know, he's still painting. He's 85, and he's been. When I was a child, he painted, and then when he retired, he started painting seriously again. And that's what he paints. He paints cowboys and Indians on horses with saddles and bridles and blankets and blue jeans and buttons and collars. And so, my painting was very simple compared to you know, actually working on the collar for a week. You know, which he would do and. So I was just uh, exploring that idea. 
and I had the I had the face rendered up totally. It looked like uh, I don't know Tom Selleck, you know, <laughs> with a big mustache yeah. and, and rough features and stuff, and it just overpowered the painting. So I just painted the face out pink and flat, and it was a better painting then, because I was about to paint that one black if I couldn't solve the face. You know? mm. uh, so. How? I've done a lot of monsters, you know. He, he does cowboys and Indians, and I've done a lot of goofy stuff, monsters and strange situations. So, in a way, I think it's strange for him to, like, paint these cowboys over and over, but I'm probably doing my own version without thinking about it, you know. I could keep, like, looking for another thing like that. He's part Indian, like, we're Choctaw Indians, and he's, like, almost half, and so, so he paints these odd paintings. I mean, there's some in here of a scaff some, somewhere in here. He paints really flat, simple, emblematic paintings, and then he paints these realistic kind of Western art paintings. And he goes back and forth, and he gets ideas for both of them. So in a way, I'm kind of coming from that too without trying to. You know, I just went off to explore modern art, and and or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and his work is there's some relations, some oddball relations, you know, and our both, our work tends to kind of lean in a bad way, you know, things aren't completely upright, which is, you know, I mean, a lot of times you have to do a pencil of a drawing, then flip it over to see it leaning, you know, but in paintings, usually I'm not necessarily straightening everything up, you know, I'm just looking for another thing that looks right. If you were to hang all those paintings uh, chronologically, you could see that they step to the next painting. There's like some kind of thing that continues, even like a horizontal thing on the right, or a color scheme, or a, sh a, t a shape, or one figure to two figures to three figures. There's some like thing like that, uh, but they weren't hung chronologically, and and so there's a lot of latitude. And also the ones that were. Uh, dark with lines those kind of are older type of work I mean I've been doing those for a lot of years and that series actually started as destroying paintings I hated you know if you can't if you had a painting for 15 years and it's still ugly you know just paint it black and start over and so I started painting these paintings black and then just doing line work on them and just doing that for years just black and white and then in this last year I started uh, thinking about the color of the black or making it violet or some dark color and maybe the line is not really white it's some kind of subtle you know subtle version of that it is this kind of a chain of images that I'm kind of studying I'm, I'm inventing it but once you get them out then you have a look at them and you think like you know what have I dredged up and the smell of it's a spill the 